a kitchen, a table, kitchen chairs, a kitchen unit along the back, a fridge, a window onto the garden. A man, Gerald, sits in a corner. He is in an armchair which doesn't belong in the kitchen. It is chintz, everything else is formica. He reads a copy of the Daily Telegraph. We guess from his voice that he's in his late 60s. He doesn't move. There is a large Bakelite radio of the 30s, 40s on the table. It is playing the Radio 4 early morning farming reports. A woman, Eileen, also in her 60s, enters backwards. She's in a dressing gown and her hair is in curlers. She's disheveled, perhaps wearing old slippers. She sits. She takes no notice of the man for most of the play. Pussy! Pussy! Puss, 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 here, pussy! Come on, where are you? Puss, 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 puss. Pussy! Puss! 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 There is no cat. There was a kitten. I am standing in the yard in my flannel at nighty. It was Elsie's, but it was handed down and it's too big for me. I'm frightened. I'm going to trip over it on the dark on my way to the Kazi. My nighty's got a hole in the sleeve, but mummy has sewn on a bit of lace trim, which Elsie didn't have. And that makes me feel better about having Elsie's hand me down. I was warm when I got out of the cut. Warm with Claude's warmth. Quiet, get up, get up, quiet. Don't wake my baby, Claude. But the wind is cutting through my nighty now. I don't like going to the Kazi in the night. There's a big spider in the Kazi with blotchy legs and one night he's going to get me. I've got a potty under my bed, but this is a big job and you can't do big jobs in potties. There it is. There's a tiny mew over there. Behind the dustbin. He's very small and fluffy and he's lost his mummy and I don't know where its mummy is either. So I will be its mummy instead. Like I'm Claude's little mummy when big mummy's busy. Boo! Haven't got a cat. We haven't got a cat. What are you saying? We haven't got a cat. You're going. You are, you know. Off her chump she is, daft as a brush. Poor old girl. We're talking to herself next, I wouldn't wonder. We haven't got a cat. Must get used to saying I. It's six months now. Cats, for heaven's sake. Whatever put that idea in her head. They were talking about cats on Woman's Hour. Or was it TVAM? Or the other? Well, they're all the same these days, aren't they? Yes. Yes. They are. Boos! 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 There is no cat. She'd like a cat. She would. She'd like a cat for the company. She's on her own too much. That's why she's going. Poor old thing. They sit on your lap. You can stroke them. There is no cat. There is no cat. There is no Cat, will you get that into your silly nodule, you stupid old woman? There is no cat. Gerald hated cat. Said they poisoned his roses with their dews. Oh, there it is, Eileen. Next door's Ginger Tom under the privet. He got his eye on Irina Harkness. 
Where's that fairy liquid? Rumming down the path, squirting water from an old fairy bottle. Those cats are a blooming pest. Ought to be a law against it. I've got half a mind to give those neighbours a piece of my mind. They ought to keep their pets under, pets under control. There could be a cat now, if I wanted. What did you want? What? Why did you come here? Well, why? Into the kitchen. She can't answer. Who's she? The cat's mother. Puss! Puss! It is no cat. Where am I? She picks up the kettle, looks at it, not knowing what it is. It's a kettle. A kettle. Kitchen! I'm in the kitchen. It's 6.30 in the morning. I can't sleep. I never sleep. Except I don't want to. But sometimes they come to her. They come to her in the night. They stand at the end of her bed. They accuse her, Robert and Claude. She recognises them, but she can't tell which is which. They have Robert's face or Claude's face, but they don't act like Robert or Claude. They keep saying, It was all your fault. And they wake her up. Kettle. Funny. Some days she finds herself standing in a room, just staring at the wall. And when she realises it, when she doesn't know how long she's been stood like that, and she thinks, what did I come in here for? What did you come in here for? Something to do. Go back to bed. Normal people are in bed. Bed of nails. She's made her own bed and now she can lie in it. Kitchen, kettle, tea. That's what she meant all along. Why didn't she say so? A pot of tea for Robert. Robert! And Robert's friend. A pot of tea for two. Robert. Robert and... What's his name? What's his name? What's his soddy name? I don't like hearing a woman use bad language. This man came up to me in safe ways. Little wire basket, widower, shopping for one. Hello, Mrs. Parker. I haven't seen you for ages. He's pawing my arm like a cat, like a cat. Puss. There is. Puss. No and he's acting like we're boots and chums. Sort of smarmy, we used to say. And I can't think for the life of me who he is. And I'm standing there by the tin vegetables, Mum used to say. You know where you are with tin, don't you? But then she'd been through the Great War. And I'm, I'm not listening to a word he's saying, just thinking, who are you? Who are you? But I'm nodding and I'm listening and I'm nodding like a nodding dog in the back of a car just treading water, so to speak, waiting for it to come back, waiting for a clue, because I don't think I've ever seen him before in my life. Lovely funeral. Must have been a great consolation. W what funeral? He looked at me very old fashioned and he took his hand off my arm like he'd been scalded. And he shook his head and he said something about how sorry he was, which could have meant anything. And it was only when I got to the detergents, I remembered it must have been Gerald's funeral. And it all came back to me. It was Mr Briggs from the Bowls Club. And he'd been at the funeral. And I wanted to rush after him and tell him it was all right. But I couldn't think of anything to say, just... Oh, you mean that funeral, which sounded daft, like I went to funerals every day of the week and twice on Sundays. So I didn't. 
I just burst into tears. Stop that. She couldn't stop herself. She knew everybody must be looking at her. And she felt such a fool. And she was sure she looked a fright. But the tears just poured down her face. Great, big, silent tears. You cry too much, Eileen. Not for Gerald or anything like that, but for me. Because I couldn't remember the funeral and Mr Briggs from the Bowls Club. You're going mad. I know my co-op number. E-757431. You haven't used the co-op in years. I got that when I was 20. Just after Alamein. Everyone had them. It was like the key of the door, having your own co-op number. And you got one and four pence in the pound. You went up in the world. With safe ways now, not the co-op. And you pay with a little plastic card. A connect card, not the, uh, the Barclays connect card. When are you going to sort yourself out? It's not the same as the co-op. There are investments. Policies, share certificates, things to be settled. They say it's the last thing to go, your co-op number. I went up to Pine Tops to see Mother her last few months. All those old dears, quite gaga, swinging from the trees they wear. But they could all remember their co-op numbers. Even Mrs Willoughby. She took her clothes off every time she saw a man. 94 if she was a day. Even she knew her co-op number. I don't know my card number. You left all that behind. Curly. Nearly 40 years now. I don't belong. It was all new then. We looked at the plans. Gerald laid them out on the kitchen table. Three bedrooms, you see, and two toilets, one on the, on the ground here by the front door. Garden front and back. We can have roses, our hall. Did I have grown roses? There he was. Where? Where? In that filthy attic at 30 bob a week, middle of a power cup and looking at a new life by candlelight. I never had more than two rooms, but now Gerald was gonna take me away from all that. On the up and up he was, going places, three promotions in five years, went to night school, actuarial, whatever that was. He'd never been happy, born out of his class he was. Yes, think. We'll never have to go to Hoxton ever again. We got to see the family, Gerald. Oh, they can come to Purley. We'll have plenty of room. Not all the time. They'll want to ask us in return. Only fair. I don't ever want to see that place again. Grubby kids, grubby houses, grubby minds. It's my family. Don't argue with me, Eileen. My mind's made up. We can have a lounge in the dining room, see? And I can have a study on the first floor in the second bedroom. What about the children? We haven't got any children. I mean, in the future. Oh, one thing at a time. We will have children, won't we? When we can afford it. One, anyway. I'd like lots of children. First things first. I was thinking of putting a garden shed at the bottom. Uh, we can have a compost heap too. 100 feet of garden, just think, it's a snip at the price. We sat up on the back of the removal span. Huge fan, hardly nothing in it. Hardly anything. Because most of it was rented. Just think, new furniture. I've never had new furniture before. Me neither. Neither have I. We can get it from the co-op on the HP. They all came to wave us off. Mum and Dad and Elsie and Bob and Ted and Meg. Like we were going to America or something. It's only Pearly, I said. Pearly to Hoxton. What's that? 
10 miles, nothing. My old man said, fall over that. I do dilly dally on the way. Oh, wish Claude had been there. I wanted to tell him I was doing the right thing. And I wanted him to tell me I was doing the right thing. His blessing. But he was somewhere out in the desert. He wasn't in a state to bless nothing. Anything. Come on, Eileen. We want to get unpacked before dark. Bye, Dad. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Oh, give us a kiss, Mum. We'll see you when we've settled. I'll give you a ring, Mr H. Don't be silly, Gerald. They've not got a phone. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no more they have. You've got our number, I hope. Just in case. Eileen will drop you a line anyway. Of course I will. Well, Abyssinia, Elsie. Hurry up, Eileen. The driver's waiting. Bye. Here, let me give you a hand up. God, did we ever live like that? We never told the neighbours where we came from. Well, we used to live near the city because it was handy for work, but honestly, the rat race was just getting too much. Dear Mum, the house is very nice and very big, and it'll take a lot of cleaning. We haven't got all the furniture yet, just for the dining room and our bedroom, but they should be delivering it in the next two weeks. Gerald thinks we should have a refrigerator too. The neighbours are nice, but they're not really my sort of people. I don't know what to say to them half the time. Do come and visit soon. We should have your mum and dad over for tea. Now we've got the new three-piece suite. Gerald used to show it off. I'm thinking of getting a washing machine for, for Eileen, of course, you know. They came for the coronation, so Gerald could show off the television. It was the first television in the family. Sit down, sit down, everybody. Now, who's for a sherry? We was used to brown ale. Were. They didn't have a co-op in Perley. They didn't have anything in Perley. Just big houses on the downs or big gardens hidden behind big walls. Everything hidden. Secrets. Family secrets. Rotten little secrets. Mustn't tell the neighbours. What would they think? And she didn't. She didn't. Even when her heart was breaking, she never told the neighbours nothing because she wanted to ring mum and tell her about Robert because mum knew what it was like to miss a son what with Claude and the war but she daren't because mum was going even then and besides she wouldn't understand not her generation she'd have been on Gerald's side didn't like him that she was frightened of him. And I was scared. Elsie would be secretly pleased because she was always jealous in her heart we'd done well. And she hadn't and she wished Robert was her son. And Meg, she was so far away in Canada. And neither of the boyos would do. Only a woman could understand. So it never happened. You can't go back. Dear Elsie, I don't know how to say this, but Robert and Gerald had a dreadful falling out. Who are you writing to, Eileen? No one, dear. Let me see. It's nothing, honestly. Then why won't you let me see? It's nothing, just a letter. Then give it here, come on, let the dog see the rabbit. <laughs> There's your sodding letter! Finally! Are you happy now? Here's to the next time. Why 
are you crying, honey? Oh, nothing. Sometimes, when Mrs. Prep is out, the house seems awfully big and lonely, and I miss Hoxton. Here's to the next time, la 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 la, la 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 la. Here's to the next time. The next time. What are you doing here, Claude? You should be at school. I'm swinging the lead. You will half catch it. And the truant officer will be down on mum and dad. Well, school's boring. Who wants to know about Shakespeare? There's a war on. You get me into trouble. What if Mrs. Pepper comes back? She don't like me having visitors, unless it's my half day. Mrs. Pepper's a stuck-up old bat. <laughs> don't say that. She's been very good to me. What? Ten shillings a week? And board. <laughs> Pokey little hole in the attic. It's my own room. I've never had my own room. She's still a stuck-up bat. If she comes back, she'll hear you. What? She goes around listening at keyholes, does she? If you're there, Mrs. Pepper, you're a stuck-up old bat. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Yeah, that's Henry Hall, isn't it? Give us a dance, Eileen. I can't. I've got to polish the silver. The silver can wait five minutes, can't it? Oh, go on. Give us a dance. She'll hear us. Well, dance quietly. Oh, stop it, Claude. You get me the sack. Come on. No, Claude, we mustn't. Where's the harm in it? Sit down. I'll make you a cup of tea. But I want to dance with you. You're my best girl, Ali. And you are my best boy. I'll put the tea on. Not yet. Come back here. We only live once. We only live once. You can't go back. <laughs> You're going mad. <laughs> My name is Eileen May Parker. I am 69 years old. I live at 19, the Glee, Pearly, sorry, CR 11, 6 EP. Today is Friday, 28th of August, 1992. Saturday, 29th of August, 1992. My co-op number is E757431. The name of a prime minister is... John Major. It's called Alzheimer's disease. T. Robert and Robert's friend. Bun boy! I gave them my best bedroom. I gave them our room. My room. She must stop saying our. Can't get used to it. First time she got a letter addressed to Mrs. E. Parker, she cried. It was right. It was etiquette. But she'd been... Mrs. G. Parker for so long. She'll never get over it. Inconsolable. They were a lovely couple. Robert and, 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 his, his friend, they're a lovely couple. Dicking it up each other. Can't use Robert's old room. It's full of junk. Gerald's junk. I must get it cleared. I'm in the back room. It's doing my back in, but well, oh, it's only for a couple of days. I did do right, didn't I? What's his name? What's the bum boy's name? I just wish I could remember his name. Irish, I think. Patrick. Very soft-spoken. Lovely manners. And there's not many you can say that of these days. You'd think they'd teach them in schools. They used to. Respect. Nowadays, I like as not rape you. Or put you in a home. She is not going to pine tops. She is not going like her mother, choking on her own vomit 
in a room full of strangers, no one to answer the bell. She won't. She won't do it. She'll kill herself first. You see, you just try it. Tea. Tea? Where? Where's the tea? I know we've got some tea because I said to myself, I must get some tea. Robert's coming and I know he likes his pot of tea. A proper pot and everything. And I know she sometimes comes back from the shop and she finds she's forgotten the bread. So she has to go all the way back just for a small white slice. But I made a list specially so I wouldn't. Indian, Earl Grey, and just in case, Robert's friend. I'm chum. Michael, Sean. You can't remember. They'll put you in a home. Where's the tea? Where's the sodding tea? I'll do it before I leave. There's two packets here. I know there is. I know there's two packets. She takes things out of the fridge, puts them on the floor. They oh. include items which should not be there. A pair of nylons, a scrubbing brush, for example. Where's the tea? Where is it? Come on. If you can't find the tea, they'll put you in pie tops. It's got to be here somewhere. I know it is. It's on the list. Oh, Jesus, love me. Find the tea. Sweet Jesus, I swear. I won't wet my pants. Where's the tea? Mustn't shout. Mustn't wake them up. Not yet. It's too early. Only babies and old women wake up yet. Mustn't disturb them. Not like that. I had to slap Robert once. He had a screaming fit right in the middle of Sainsbury's. Not enough discipline, that's his trouble. Not Sainsbury's like you get now, where you can't find anything and there's no one to help. The old Sainsbury's with a meat counter and a cheese counter, like a shop's meant to be, and a girl in white overalls behind each. <laughs> flashing over a head in pots and the smell of cool marble. He's going to choke. He's rolling around on the marble floor and he's going to make himself sick. Stop it. Stop it, Robert. I said stop it. Everyone's looking, Robert. If you don't stop right now, Mummy's going to hit you. Do you hear me? I mean, I'll hit you right across the legs and you'll be sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I dream about those slaps. He comes to me in a dream and he's screaming. Tears are rolling down his cheeks. You hurt me, mummy. You hit me and you hurt me. It wasn't her. It was Gerald, honestly. He's the one who hurt you. He threw you out of the house. She didn't want you to leave. She was crying too. Oh, son of mine. It was the only time I ever hit him. But it stopped the fit. And he always forgives me. In the dream. If I don't wake up. It was all your fault. Too soft, mother's boy. She puts back things which belong out. The nylons she stuffs in the pocket of her dressing gown, almost guiltily. The scrubbing brush she puts back in a cupboard. As she does so, she sees the tea and takes it out. Oh! 
Oh, thank you. Jesus, thank you. See, I knew I'd got it. She knew she'd got it. They think she's going off her head, and she's not. She knew it was on the list. She's not gone yet. Careful. Declan. Robert's friend, Declan. I knew it would come back to me. It does, if you just wait. If you don't panic. Declan, Mum, I'd like you to meet my friend, my boyfriend. Shirtlifter. My boyfriend, Declan. And he looked me right in the eyes and he said, Pleased to meet you, Mrs Parker, like he meant it. Robert's told me so much about you. And I said, nothing good, I expect. And he smiled. And when he smiled, his eyes smiled too. <laughs> Declan! And she can't forget now. Not with it right there in front of her nose. Maybe you'd like a boiled egg. I got eggs too, just in case. Kettle? She takes the tea, opens the packet, remembers the kettle, goes to feel it. It is cold. You forgot to switch it on. She switches it on. You're not safe. Milk, sugar. Strainer. You left the saucepan on, forgot it. Two cups, two saucers, two teaspoons. The whole place was filled with smoke. Like beans, I seem to recall. Slot basin. You could have choked to death. Biscuits. Or burned to death. Teapot. Might have been a relief, of course, put you out of your misery. How could I forget the teapot? You're not safe. Got to get it right, or they'll put you in pine tops. Got to get it right for Robert and Robert's Declan. Declan, Robert and Declan. Claude, what are you doing here? You're dead. It's not Claude, Mum. It's me, Robert. Sorry. Silly of me. You look just like Claude in this light. Careful, Mum. People think you're off your rocker. Oh, Robert. I don't know what to say. How did you find out? Auntie Elsie. Of course. I had to come, even though he was an old bastard. That's no way to talk about your father. He's dead, Mum. I know, I know. Was it difficult? After the second stroke? Well, yes. All the lifting. And he was incontinent. Sometimes I thought I'd uh, never... Um, and him sitting there couldn't move, couldn't speak. Just his eyes following you and hating you, hating you for what he'd become. You should have told me. How? Auntie Elsie, I, I could have helped. How? Change his pajamas and his sheets. He wouldn't have you in the house, let alone touching him. He couldn't have stopped me. You think I'd do that to him? I'm his wife. Was. Was. I forgave him for what he did to you. Don't worry, Mum. That's all in the past. I'm not bitter. Honest. I never wanted things like that. And now he's gone. Well, we can be together again. But you've got to take me as I am. I can't pretend anymore. I'm too old for that. I don't know what to do. I've never been on my own before. We were eight at home. 
And after that was always your father. You'll be all right. I'll look after you. There's <laughs> not many left, are there? For the funeral, I mean. We kept ourselves to ourselves, especially towards the end. Who are these people? I don't know. From a mutual, I suppose. Well, we have to talk to them. I suppose so. I'd rather talk to you. There'll be time later. We'd better go and look at the flowers. It's expected. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. And you must be... Gerald never talked about work. Wouldn't be interested. I never met the people he worked with. Never mixed business in pleasure. 36 years. Left the house at 10 past eight, just after the news. That was before they changed it. Home in time for the shipping forecast. I'm home, dear. Same words every night. I'm home, dear. Should have made it into a tape recording. Save the bother. At first I used to ask, how's your day been, dear? But I soon gave that up. Let's not talk about it. Eight hours a day, five days a week, 36 years, not including Christmas and holidays. How many hours does that make? Robert could tell you, quick as a flash. Always good at mental arithmetic he was. Took after his father with that. But I never had the faintest idea what Gerald was doing. Something to do with figures and insurance. Only a crust. And that's all he ever said. Leaving you with the style to which you are accustomed. He could still joke then. Leaving a roof over your head. And what did I do? All those years. Eight hours a day, five days a week, 36 years. You kept a nice home. I can't remember. It was always spotless. I was never ashamed. A wife to be proud of. I remember Robert teaching him, teaching him to read. Puppy, puppy wakes up. He stretches himself. He shakes himself. What did Puppy do next? I don't know. I wasn't there. I know he sniffed at a bee somewhere along the line. And I think he chewed some slippers on the way too. We did laugh. And, and deep sea mocky. There was a squid who lived. Celia squid, I think it was. And as she went, she slithered and slid. He had two blades too. Nobody, nobody, nobody knows what's it like to have chill blades on my kind of toes. You love that, Robert. I bounce you on my knee and you'd roll over and giggle. I thought you'd choke. I wonder if you remember. Oh, I saw name, name tapes. I remember that. Name tapes on everything. And I sewed your little gloves onto the end of your arms, your little raincoat. You went off to school. You cried. I cried. And wondered what I was going to do with myself in the house. All on my own. My tea was always on the table. I wanted to help you with your homework, Robert. Maps was fine, because that was just tracing. And I'd done that with dress patterns during the war. Utility frocks and blackout bloomers. But I was always good at dancing anyway. So we managed in nature study that French and maths and history. I really wanted to help Robert. But He's got to do it for himself. He can't rely on you to hold his hand for the rest of his life. You were so bright, Robert and always laughing as a baby. Gerald should have played with you more. I had to bring work home from the office. They relied on me. The two of them, one at each end of a dining table, the Monday play on the radio, 
steam rising from the iron as I did the ironing. I didn't understand what Gerald was doing. Don't you worry yourself about that. And Robert's school books. They were getting too complicated as well. I looked them both, their heads over their books, and I thought, I'm living with two men, and they're both strangers. <laughs> oh, you do get some funny ideas, Eileen. Must be your time of life. And daytimes. All I can remember is the quiet. Suburbs are quiet. Four walls. And nothing but woman's hour to keep the silence away. Robert at school. Gerald at the office. There was the daily, of course, later on, after Robert went to college. It's about time you put your feet up, Eileen. We're none of us getting any younger. It's not as if I've rushed off my feet. Now Robert's away, there's hardly anything for me to do as it is. Well, you mustn't devalue yourself. I don't need a woman around the place. She'll get under my feet. She'll do the heavy work. What heavy work? I don't know. I don't want a stranger in the house. She won't be a stranger. She does for the Briggses too. They say she's very reliable. And what's good enough for Mrs Briggs is certainly good enough for my eye. I was always frightened of her. I don't think she approved of me. I used to go around hoovering before she got there so she wouldn't think the house was in a state. Dear Robert, we have a new cleaning woman, so I'm quite the lady of leisure. The garden is looking a bit bare. What the time of year? But I've been clearing up all the leaves for something to do. I hope college is going well. Your father and I are very proud of you. Oh, I enclosed some special offer tokens, which I cut out of the newspaper because I know money is tight. I know how busy you must be, but it would be nice to hear from you just to know that you are all right. We went to bridge on Thursday, but I'm afraid I disgraced myself in three no trumps and went four off. Your father was not pleased. Are you, um, are you coming home at Christmas? I imagine they'll, they'll want your college room during the holidays for conferences or something. But you know there's always a place for you. We keep the room just as you left it. Kettle has boiled. Kettle? She unplugs the kettle and pours the water carefully into the sugar bowl. What did she do? How did she make the hours go? In a dream most of the time. Penny for them? What? Penny for your thoughts. I, I can't remember, I've lost the thread. Sometimes I don't know where you are. Reading, mending, sewing, Planning for meals, shopping for meals, cooking the meals, washing up after the meals. Seems like as soon as you finish one, you start thinking about the next. It passed the time. But she don't remember any of it. Doesn't. Doesn't. Shelves were Gerald, I know that. Shelves were man's work and fuses. I've always been scared of electricity. And heights. And going mad, like your mother. And going. It comes and it goes. When it's coming, she knows it's coming. Everything looks different. She looks at something and she can't put a name to it. Even the simplest things. She doesn't know what they're for. Shapes. Everything's just shapes. And there's no meaning to any of it. And then it happens, and then she doesn't remember. She sees it all afterwards, and she sees what a mess she's made. 
and she doesn't realise it's her. And she thinks, I did it, but I, I didn't, I didn't. It was somebody else, but I, I, I'll clear it up and I'll pretend it didn't happen. You can't keep it from Robert. That's the worst. Knowing it's coming. If I didn't know, I wouldn't care. He'll put you in pine tops. Let me go. Let me go! I, I do not, I do not want the darkness. I will not go down there. I will not sink into nothing. I won't let it. Robert! Robert! I mustn't wait, Robert. And Robert's friend. Declan. Got to get it right. Got to be careful. Robert mustn't know. We've got to tell a little white lie, haven't we, Eileen? Play a little trick on our baby. Yes, must not know. Not yet. Mustn't. He takes the tea and spoons it into the pot. She stirs the leaves. There is no water. Water? She picks up the kettle. It is empty. She fills it. She puts the kettle on again. Didn't I? You did? Put it in there. She sees the sugar bowl, realises. I want to get it right. I, I do try. I try so hard, but there's nothing. I, 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 I can nothing. Ought to be locked up. She's a danger to self. She's not fit to be on her own. Lock her in the loony bin. Put her in the pie tops. It's for her own good. I'm 68. That's not old, for heaven's sake. Not these days. You, you see them down in the Women's Institute, widows, just like me. Women in hats, collecting for flag days, going on trips to Eastbourne, saving whales, protecting cats. Where's that fairy liquid? The world is full of them. You see them down the high street every day, shopping for one. Survivors, go on forever, go till they drop, full of energy, full of curiosity. Why me? It's not fair. Life's not meant to be fair. Peaceful in the cottage hospital. That's what I always imagine. Crisp, white, sun streaming behind, flowered curtains. Robert holding my hand by the bedside. Hello, Mum. Robert. I was just thinking. The carol set me off. This is from King's College and you're at college. Not King's. Oh, how you've grown! Or is it me that shrunk? You're thin, though. You're not feeding yourself properly, I can see that. I feel fine. Here, let me take a look at you. Oh, let me get my coat off. Is that your college scarf? Nice colours. No, don't worry about that. I'll take your rucksack up later. No, you don't need to. You sit yourself down and relax. You must be tired after your journey. I'll just put the kettle on. Then you can tell me all about it. Have you made lots of friends? Have you made any nice girls? I think I'll take it upstairs. It's only getting in the way here. You were always, always the shy one. Kettle. She fills the kettle automatically from a water purifying jug, plugs it in as she talks. I could kill myself. Be cleaner. No, you couldn't. I did before. Because of what you did to Robert. No, you didn't. I tried to. I found you. I didn't have the right pills then. 
snoring on the settee. Or not enough. You'd vomited on the Persian rug. Disgusting. I've got enough now, just in case. You went to hospital, an ambulance came right outside the front door. Neighbours watching through the net. But I'm glad I didn't. Didn't then. I had to live for Robert. Because I knew he'd be back one day and I knew he'd need me then. All boys need their mothers. No, no, nothing serious. She slipped off a ladder. <laughs> nothing to worry about. Nothing to look at. I hate ladders! I shall be home in a day or two. I came round in the cottage hospital. There was a nurse bending over me. I thought she was an honour. I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. They didn't believe me! They looked at me funny when I came back in the post office. Sort of pitying. They spoke gentle but they were scared. I could feel it. Didn't want to touch. Might catch whatever it is. There. They're starting to do it again. Mr. Watts's face in the supermarket. Well, fuck him! From the gutter to the gutter. Full circle. It's a sign. They were at the funeral. Next door. Spoke in hushed tones. So sorry. Anything we can do. Too late then, wasn't it? Fifteen years too late. A death too late. Watching behind the curtains. Watching Robert walk out. Gerald shouting down the path after him. I don't ever bother to come back. And me tucking on his arm crap. I listen to him. He doesn't mean it. He's just upset. I'm sure he doesn't mean it. You're my son. We'll stay out of this, Eileen. It was Christmas, Gerald. You can't throw your own son out on the streets at Christmas. Where's he going to go? What's he going to do? He's not my son. How can you say such a thing? I know what I'm doing. What is all this? Why are you behaving like this? What's happened? I'll explain later. I've got a right to know. Don't make a scene. No. Don't I have any say in it? This is my son. Our son. I... What's I he... Know. What's he done? Eileen, the neighbours will hear. Stop the neighbours. Eileen. You heard me. You are throwing my son out of our house and you won't even tell me why. Back in there. Damn it, Eileen. I'm your husband. I order you to get back inside. Where will you go? What will you do? Think of me, Robert. I'm your mother. What about me? You're making yourself ridiculous. And Robert, not even looking back. One small rucksack. That's all he took. And his room here. Burn it. Burn everything. Even the photos in the family albums. Anything with Robert in. There's still the gaps in the albums. Square patches lighter than the rest. Fading now, of course. What he couldn't burn, he put in the back of the Volvo, took down to the tip. And still he wouldn't. Still he couldn't tell her what it was that happened. He never existed. Nothing left. A bare room. Not Robert's room now. The spare room. The junk room. Any old rubbish in it. Sometimes I go. I sit in it. Among the junk. Just to remember what it used to be like. When it's Robert's room. We have... No. Some. I've still got his school certificates. Hid them where Gerald couldn't find him. I thought Robert might leave them one day. I told you not to mention that. No. For a job or something. Funny, he never did. He's never asked for them. Maybe they don't ask to see your certificates anymore. They always used to, even for the service. Can I see your certificates, said Mrs Pepper. Silly woman.
Too many pearls. I haven't got any. I've got a note from school. Eileen is bright and capable, thoroughly conscientious and reliable. I'm sure she'll make an excellent service. I didn't have shorthand in typing. What else was there? Besides, service was living, one less in the house. Mrs. Pepper was a tartar, but it was only Dulwich Village. So it was easy for Hoxton on your half day. Walk to Liverpool Street, then a 42 bus. They're more trusting now, perhaps. I must give them to Robert, the certificates. As a souvenir or something, later. You won't want them. They'll embarrass him. You're an embarrassment. Just in case. The kettle is boiling again. Kettle. I should have stayed on. I should have got certificates. Kettle. <laughs> she unplugs the kettle, puts water into the teapot this time, stirs it absently. I was bright. Miss Havergill said so. Such a pity you have to leave us. You're such a bright girl. Fourteen I was. So many things I'll never know. Oh, you needn't bother yourself with all that. Robert had to go to college. I was set on it. All my life. I've looked at the world through blinkers. I've never understood the half of it. You're a woman. Robert tried to explain calculus. I never understood. I never understood anything after the third year. I don't know my own son. Does he take sugar? I can't remember. Does Robert's friend? Best be safe. She finds some old sugar lumps in a drawer, in wrappers, taken from various restaurants over the years. She puts them on a saucer. Just in case. She looks in the teapot, stirs it, looks at her list. Tea. Sugar. Cups. She goes to the cupboard and takes out two soup bowls. Cups. Handles. She feels the edge of the two soup bowls uncertainly, puts them down hard, searches for cups and finds them, lays them carefully. Saucers. I suppose Robert must have a lot of friends. It's not as if he's a boy anymore. He's... We just moved to the early. This is Alba Lidera Reading. Thirty minutes ago, the polling stations closed and voting in the general election ended. Mr Churchill has just resigned. He's seen us through the war. Now he was old and deaf and he had a stroke. And he was going gaga. Nobody said, but everybody knew. Time to get rid of him. Time to put him out to grass. Poor old soul, daft old sod. Mayday Hospital, 1955, May 3rd. He's 37 now. I can't believe it. He's been a man nearly 20 years. Old enough to know better. Old enough to know his own mind. It goes evil. I will not condone evil. Oh, you always think you're 13 at most. In your mind, that's how you always see them. Oh, had the gall to boast about it. To my face, nothing gay about it, I said. Nothing but filth and disease and shame on the family. Always in shorts, flannel shorts, with little blue legs and the winter which you rub Vaseline on. Never in long trousers. As is down round his ankles. But they grow out of short trousers, whether you like it or not. They cover their hairy legs and their bushes sprout and their peepees grow and they start doing things they shouldn't. What do I tell the neighbours? What do I tell your mother? I'll be the death of her. But you see the stains on the sheets and your washed sheets and you don't say anything. Is that what you want? Do you want to kill your mother? And they don't say anything because they've got their own lives to lead and their own secret thoughts. 
Not one word. Did you hear me? Don't you breathe a word. And you don't know anything. Anything at all about them. They have lots of friends, don't they? Bum chums. They're noted for it. Pickups, tarts, Nazis. They always had a special friend as a boy. Not always the same one, but there was always one. David Morton, he was the first, came back with Robert for milk and biscuits after school. Michael Weinstein, Howard Marlin, always boys. I wonder if they, even then, well, they could have. Up in his rooms for hours they were. Music on full blast. They could have been doing anything for all I know. I'd never intrude. Who soft. I've always believed in privacy. Even if you're only little, you've got a right. I always knocked. What is it? Can I come in? Uh, wait a minute. What do you want? They start younger and younger these days. You read about it all the time. But it wasn't these days in those days, no. He was too young, I think. Spoons for the sugar. She takes spoons out of the drawer, setting them on the saucers. Thirteen years it's been. Thirteen years. Never forgave him, us, college, then his first teaching. I missed his graduation. I'd have liked to see him in his cap and gown. He's head of maths now. It's them in short trousers, not him. Not that they wear short trousers anymore. Not even the little ones. And he never even wrote, not once, unless... I tore them up. Every morning, I'd listen for the post. Plop on the mat. Quarter to eight. Regular as clockwork. We got a proper postman then. Now it's different. Young chap. Doesn't even wear a uniform. Doesn't like getting up in the morning. They don't, the youngsters. Didn't have to go through the war. ARP duty, that would have killed them. And he doesn't get round sometimes till half past eleven. What's the use of that? You want to open your letters over your breakfast. Anything for me, Gerald? Yes, Bills. Nothing for you. There never was. He stopped writing after a while. But I kept hoping. Every day. For years and years. Just something from seeing from the AA about insurance. Maybe today, I thought to myself. Do we want any Christmas cards from Save the Children? He can't forget me just like that. It wasn't my fault. Holiday brochures already and not even Christmas. And I think of him going off to school every day just like he used to. Except now he was standing in front of the class. And I used to ache in the pit of my stomach, feeling so empty and alone behind the neck curtains, like we're all alone behind the neck curtains in the street, every one of us. They'd so sooner call social services. And there's nothing, nothing they do to lift a finger. They're too scared of doing the wrong thing. And we all see it coming, but we can't stop it. Just look out behind the neck curtains as the ambulance comes to take you away. Or someone says, you've fallen off a stepladder. And they'd shake their heads. And maybe if they'd spoken to you in the shop, they'd slip a little card through the letterbox. Don't want to intrude. Don't want to make a fuss. Don't want to put a foot wrong. And God, 
when is it ever going to change? Somebody's got to make the first move, but not me. She dead. She's too far gone. She dead. They talk. They think she was mad. You are mad. My name is Eileen May Parker. Milk. She takes milk out of the fridge as she speaks, lifts the lid of the teapot and pours the milk in. It spills my over the table. Name is, my name is Eileen May Parker. I'm 69 years old. I live at 19, the Glebe, Pearly, Surrey. Today is Saturday, the 29th of August, 1991. The name of a prime minister is John Major. My co-op number is E75743. See? One. Mad. We used to have a copper in the corner of the kitchen. Big wooden lid. And a hole for the coal fire underneath. It took forever to get it lit. Kitchen full of smoke. Dad huffing and puffing at the grate. Then you'd have to stand on a stool and stir all the sheets with a long wooden pole. Oh, smell of steam and hot cotton. What are you doing up there? What's it look like I'm doing, Claude? I'm stirring copper. Well, you shouldn't be doing that. It's your day off. I want to help. I mean, now Mum's down with the munitions. You can't get enough of that with Mrs Pepper. You and Meg and Elsie should help more. Leave it out. I'm at school. When did you ever go to school? I I've got to now. You've yeah, got to get maths. Get in the Air Force. You can't go in the Air Force. You're too young. I can lie about my age. You were dead. They catch you. No, we got a letter from Ted. There's loads of blokes on his convoy. 16 or even less. They don't ask questions. Need all the blokes they can get. One volunteer's worth two pressed men. That's the Navy. That's different. No, it's not. They're crying out everywhere. You'd look good in light blue. Match your eyes. <laughs> Just think, Eileen. A hurricane pilot. Climbing into the sun. Up into the clouds, Bank. Get Jerry in your sights and... <laughs> Drop like a stone. Out of the sun. Clouds rushing past. Head on its tail. <laughs> He's faltering. Close in. <laughs> Shoot his tail off. Then drop to the left, aim up. Yeah. Out on the petrol bank and squeeze. Kaboom! <laughs> oh, what you made me do. Oh, the floor. A grown woman behaving like a silly girl ought to know better. I'm serious, Eileen. I'm serious. Do it. You mean it? Cross my heart. And when you get up there and you give Fritz, get him in your sights, give him one from me. Give him one from all of us in this street for all this cowardly bombs and his terror and his stopping the tubes running on time. Cor, you should have been in the flicks. Ooh. The way you looked just then was a picture. Give up. I mean it though, Claude. We owe them a few. Do what you think's best. He can't help you now. Dear Mrs. Henderson, it is with deep regret that I have to inform you that your son, Flight Sergeant Claude Henderson, has been shot down over Egypt. 
and is missing presume. It's your fault. You egged me on. If it wasn't for me. And just, and because, just because you thought I'd look good in light blue. blue. I went on looking for him. There's a place near Runnymead. Huge white building. Names all around the walls. Roll of honour. I'm not there. The African boys have their own in Egypt. You'll never find me. It's too far. We waited and hoped. Mum never gave up hope. Has the letter come yet? She asked in pine tops. Not yet, Mum, I'd say. Day before she died. Last time I saw her, she said, any news? And I knew what she was talking about. And I said, Mum, Claude's dead. He's been dead these 30 years now, you stupid woman. I don't know uh, what made me say it that one time and her so near the end. Wicked girl, she said, wicked evil girl. You're killing your own mother. You must never kill hope. And I killed hope. Sure, as I kill Claude. He comes. He comes to me in the night. Terrible wounds. Blood streaming down his head. Baby. And take his poor hurt head in my hands. There is blood trickling all over my finger. Help me, Eileen. It hurts. Make it stop hurting. There's blood. There's blood in my dreams. I can't stand the pain. Make it go away. I don't want to hear. I don't want to know. You used to kiss it better. Oh, stop it. Stop. Stop it. Leave me in peace. If that doesn't break, Robert. Claude and Robert. Funny. All those years Robert was gone, I kept thinking of Mum. Waiting for Claude, like me waiting for him, Robert. Missing, presumed, alive. Missing, presumed... Clear! Let's call him Claude. Who? The baby, silly, if it's a boy. Now then, you know, we agreed on Robert. You agreed on Robert. It's got to be Robert. Out of respect, my father was Robert. But Claude! I know what Claude was. I wish you wouldn't harp on it so. But what kind of name is that to give a boy in this day and age? Well, it's a middle name. We've left all that behind us. Now, the past is best where it is, dead and buried. I wonder... If he'd have turned out different, if he'd have been a Claude. There's not many these days called Claude. He'd probably have been bullied at school if he'd have been Claude. I mean, even more than he was. And he was, I know he was, though he wouldn't say so. He was always shy. They're the worst. Bottle it up, turn it up on themselves. You could see the bruises coming up when he came out of the bath. Robert's what? in the doorway in his underpants. Eileen rubs his shoulders with a bathroom towel. What's that? What is that? What's what? That. That on your leg, on your shin. Let me have a look at it. It's nothing, Mum. Just let me have a look. Leave it, Mum. I just bumped against a desk, that's all. But I knew. You can't fool a mother. It's my turn. He'd learn to stand up for himself. 
Can't go high behind your whole apron strings for the rest of his life. But he's being bullied. We should see the teacher. And what would Robert say if we went running to his teacher? He'd say we were showing him up, that's what. No, he's got to learn to take care of himself. Gerald started to teach him boxing, self-defence. Robert was never keen. Then Gerald hit him, by accident, I think, right on the nose. And Robert burst into tears, ran away, hid on the allotments all day. Didn't come back till well after dark. I was sick with worry, but Gerald wouldn't let me go and look for him. He'll come back, tail between his legs, you'll see. Wouldn't learn boxing anymore. Wouldn't come near his father for weeks. No backbone, mother's boy. That's when it all started. Between Robert and Gerald. Robert never trusted his father again. And Gerald wouldn't, couldn't believe the boy was doing it on purpose. A man wants a son to follow in his footsteps. It's only natural. He takes after his mother. That's what they used to say. Joe used to wince every time they said it. She's been stirring the teapot all this time. She stops, puts the spoon in the saucer. She sees that the little puddle of tea is the wrong colour. She looks in the pot. Can't do the simplest things. A danger to herself. Is there no end to it? While she's in it, she's in it. And it seems like she'll never get out of it. And it's a mercy, really, that she doesn't know she's in it. But the worst is, the very worst is, when she's coming out, and she knows she's been in. And she gets so scared of what's happening to her. And she knows sometimes she ought to kill herself. Because it's only going to get worse. Yes. The worst is yet to come and how. And she would if it weren't for the thought of Robert and what he would think. And how he'd explain it. And it would make him ashamed of her. And then sometimes, when she's just coming out and she realises she's been in, she goes back in. Almost because she wants to. Because she wants to hide because coming out is so much worse than being in and not knowing. No point in fighting it. What makes you think you're so special? Nursing homes are full of people like you. She's not going back in. She is going to get it right all morning if she must. He's not going to stay in bed all day, just waiting for you to bring him a cup of tea. She takes the tea pot empties it, puts the kettle on again. It's too late now. Boil, 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 boil the kettle. Warm teapot. Put tea in teapot. Put water in teapot. Put milk in jug. Put sugar in sugar bowl. Put biscuits on plate. Two cups, two saucers, two teaspoons cups. And spoons on. Do it, you old fool! Do it! He'll wake up, he'll come down, he'll find the mess, it'll be yes. too late. Cups, saucers, spoons, milk jug, milk in jug. He takes a pint of milk out of the fridge, pours it all into the jug, ticks it off. Sugar. Sugar, yes, biscuits. I've always got biscuits. 
you do when you've been without, when you've had six round the kitchen table and it's Christmas Eve and there's nothing on the table and there's nothing in the house and no coal on the fire, though it's snowing out. Then there was a knock on the door. A Sally Army with a chicken and a pudding in a cardboard hamper and a bag of coal and a toy each for all the children. Used, but no matter. And a pink ticket for each for the pie shop on Boxing Day. There was an eel. Eel pie and mash shop on the corner. Cool tiles, white and bottle green. And all the kids from Pitfield Street lined up in their Christmas jerseys with their pink tickets in their hands. I told Gerald about that once. Then he made me promise. Don't you ever repeat do you hear? Ever. After that, you've always got something in the larder to make sure. A tin of soup. Beans, just in case. She always kept the larder full. When she remembered. They are here, I know. I know they're here. They're my lump puffs from yesterday. That's the packet. And the new one right by here waiting to be opened. I'm sure it was yesterday. Or the day before, or last week, or the week before that. There were chocolate digestives, plain. I usually get milk. But this time I thought of Robert and I realised I didn't know if he liked milk or plain. I don't know anything about him these days. And then I thought, no, he's an intellectual. He'll be plain. See, plain. But what if he's milk? He always had a sweet tooth as a child. Put sugar on his tomatoes on toast. Seven years old he was. Gerald shouted at her for that too. You don't put sugar on vegetables. Tomatoes are fruit, he said. And Gerald told him not to answer back. But he was right. I looked it up later in Britannica. He was a little know-all even then. Made Gerald even madder. Sent him to bed without his tea. Got to be firm. Respect authority. They thank it for you in the end, in later life. Mm. I sneaked him some malted milk and a ginger nut later. What set her off on that? Biscuits. Woman sees biscuits, remembers, puts them on a plate, looks at her work, a great relief. She can't oh. she's done it. Checks the list. Cups, saucers, milk, teaspoons, sugar, biscuits. Will they want plates for their biscuits? Could they get worried about crumbs in the bed? If they think they've got to be on their best behaviour, mind their P's and Q's, put yourself in their place. If you were Robert's friend, you'd be nervous. First time to stay. Stay with his mother, almost like in-laws. Robert too, he'll be nervous. First time he's seen his mother in 13 years, apart from a funeral. And that time I went to Birmingham. You went behind my back. I had to. You cheated on me. Only the once. Once is enough. It was for your son. I have no son. Calm down, you'll have another turn. I don't care if I have another turn. It'll be you, you bringing me to an early grave. Don't say that. Like you did, Claw. Stop it! Stop it! There's no need to shout, Eileen. Then tell me. Tell me what he's done so you'd throw him out. Is he a murderer? I've told you the subject is closed. Dear Robert. The garden is looking lovely. Your father is under the weather. He's never properly recovered from the stroke, really. I never did have a stroke. It was, it was a dizzy spell. Though you'd never know he'd had a stroke to look at him as he was pretty well for a man of his age. We came forth in the bridge drive. Not bad though, I'd say it myself. 
I thought you might be interested in this article from the Daily Telegraph. He won't so I cut it. it out for you. He won't get it. He's moved. I do hope he hasn't moved. He wrote and told you. I tore it up. He's bound to have a forwarding address. I tore it up. I still love you, Robert. Whatever it is you've done, you're still my son. He thinks you hate him too. Oh, God. We have done those things we ought not to have done. And left undone those things we ought to have done. But thou, O oh Lord, art merciful. She'll have to put them at their ease. The Day of Atonement. Don't worry about the biscuit crumbs, she'll say. You're on holiday. Relax. Let me look after you, she'll say. Danny there in your curlers at the foot of the bed and then stark naked in their sin and stained sheets. Brace them. Maybe they don't want biscuits. Maybe I should do a proper breakfast. Boiled eggs. Toast. Robert used to like soldiers. Dip them in his yolk. Never touch the white. Gerald didn't like that either. You're wasting half an egg. He's got an allergy. There was an article in Woman's Realm. Some of them have allergies. It's the sulphur makes them sick. Don't force the boy. Got to learn thrift. There's people starving in the world. A much good half a boiled egg will do them. Should I do eggs? Would they like eggs? I don't know what they like. Maybe they just want to be left alone. Alone in their shame. I don't know anymore. They don't want the old woman around. She knows nothing. What's she doing? Why did she come in here? Kettle. She feels the kettle. Be boiling, I can tell. Tea. Tea. Tea for Robert and Robert's friend. What do I do when I go in? I'll knock, of course, just like I used to. Knock, knock! Who's there? Sounds like a joke. What is it? It's only me. I brought you a cup of tea. Hang on a minute. What if they're, um, what if I'm interrupting? They'd say, wouldn't they? You can't come in, Mum. I'm sticking out at my bum chum. You look a fright. They'd lock the door, wouldn't they? If the lock works, has it got a key? I can't remember. Maybe they've locked it away. They wouldn't let me just barge in. That would ruin everything. We're not staying with her, sniffing round, poking and prying, dirty-minded old bat. Don't say that. And good riddance to the both of them. Hang on, that's what Robert always used to say. Your tea's getting cold. Hang on, you'll be late for school. Hang on, there's going to be an earthquake. Hang on. And I'm hanging on. I'm hanging on, Robert. I'm hanging on for dear life. Bed springs, dressing gowns, put their bits away. Do they, do they do? No, I don't want to know. None of my business. And me stood in the corridor with the tea getting cold. Oh, Mum, you shouldn't have. Maybe I shouldn't. Tea cosy. Tea cosy? Can't have it getting cold. Rummages in the drawer, gets a cosy out, carefully puts it over the teapot, looks at it, counts again. Sugar, milk, biscuits. Spoons, cups, slot bowls. No, no slot bowls. Got to have slot bowls. What if they want a second cup? Just can't put it on top of your own eggs. Must have slot bowls. She rummages in the cupboard, finds it. That'll impress. He must let me love him. Please, God, let me love him. It's hard to take his love. You get out of the habit of accepting it. He's not used to it from me. Not anymore. Too many years silence. 
not my fault. He must not forgive me, Robert. Forgive me, Jesus, and he must love me. He must. He'll know when he sees the tea. No, I accept him as he is. Homosexual. As long as he's happy, that's all I want, for him to be happy. He looked happy with, with his friend. Declan. Declan. What's Declan? An Irish sodomite. They kept glancing at each other and smiling like it was all a secret joke. They were laughing at you. I haven't seen Robert happy like that since he was tiny. See the old girl? She's a fright. She's a ruin. Out in the garden, in the sun, in his high chair. Better stay within with her though. She's got a bit put by. Now the old sods kick the bucket. Under the pear tree. He was always careful with his money, stingy old bastard. So it must be a good bit. And there's the house too. She's got to leave a few bob. Don't want her getting religion and giving it to some crackpot mission. Maybe we can get her locked up in a home and get our hands on it. Give it to our bum chums. He loved being tickled. I George, I saw a puppy cat, a treaty up for me. I did, I saw a putty cat, as plain as play could be. There is no cat. There was a cat in the coach station when I met Robert. It had one eye and mange and it shivered as it brushed between my legs. Where's the fairy liquid? Squirt the fairy liquid at it. Squirt it with the fairy liquid. Chase him down the garden path with his little rucksack with your fairy liquid bottle. That's the phone. I know it's the phone. I'll get it. The doctor says you've not got to go rushing about. I can't go rushing about. So, so what are you saying you're going to go rushing about for? Answer the phone, woman. Hello? Is it for me? Elsie, how nice to hear from you. I'm just coming. You stop right there. You'll be doing yourself a mischief. What was that, Elsie? Who is it? Oh. I said, who is it? I can't talk long, Robert. Your father's here. Answer me. I have to go. Your father's calling. I can't reach my stick. You don't need your stick. All right, love, I'll be there somehow. Help me, Eileen. I'm coming. I need to visit. Station 12.30. I said I'm coming. I need to visit the bathroom. I'm coming. Who was it? Just the wrong number. I can't talk long. Your father's here. I could have bitten my tongue. So ungrateful. It was the shock. I felt dizzy. I thought my heart would burst. And then I cheated. Where are you going? I thought I'd see Elsie. She's been a bit under the weather. I'll come soon. No, dear. No point in both of us going. I could do with a breath of fresh air. And how am I going to get you to Elsie's? We'll take a taxi. And since when have you spent money on taxis? I never go out these days. Honestly, dear, I don't want to impose on her. She's not up to visitors, really. I'm just taking a few things. You're up to something. Don't be silly. She's got the flu. I don't want her giving it to you. That's the last thing I need on my hands. What about me? You'll be all right. I'll be back to fix your supper. All alone in the house on my own. Hey, it's only a few hours, love. I could drop dead any time. You wouldn't care. You're not going to drop dead. I no. I'll put the phone on your little table just in case. I was so scared he'd find out. I was convinced he'd ring Elsie just to check. Elsie said not to worry. She'd cover if he called, say I'd gone to the shops for her. Gerald never told Elsie about Robert. Never told anyone. 
he was too ashamed. None of your aunts will kiss you, son. It's always something vague. He doesn't get much time to visit. He's got his own life to lead. I suppose Robert must have told her. Eventually. He always got on with Elsie. Common as muck. And a laugh like a horse. And afraid of nothing. Not like Eileen. All her life. Eileen's been running scared of one bloody thing after another. Eileen, I warn you. November it was. Came by bottom. <laughs> Stupid, really. It should have been much quicker by train. But he said the coach station. And anyway, the train would have been more out of the housekeeping and more to explain I could hide £5.50. It was raining. We went to a cafe. I was crying. I couldn't stop it. I couldn't speak for the tears. You were always crying. She cries easily. What she you can't help it. She cried at Gardner's question type once. They had a question about lupins and Robert used to grow lupins out of the front when he was little. It was the only thing he ever grew. She felt such a fool. What are you crying for? Lupins! See? She's at it again. Just the thought of it. Take no notice of her. Old people get weepy. It's their glands. They can't control it. Doesn't mean anything. Ten to eight. Is it too early? Old people get up early sometimes. It doesn't seem worth the bother of going to bed. And it's a lovely day. You don't want to miss it. They can go up on the common, maybe up to the ponds and feed the ducks. They'll thank me for it, I know they will. They won't, they'll think you're off your chump. Yes, it's time. Pot should have settled. Don't want it stewed, do we? Oh no, our boys wouldn't want it stewed. She feels the pot. It is cold. No water. I, do, I don't, I don't understand. How long have I? It can't have gone. No water. She lifts the pot. It is light. <clears throat> My name is Eileen May Parker. I am 68 years old. I live at 19, the Glebe, Purley. Today is Friday, 28th of August, 1992. The name of a prime minister is John Major. My co-op number is... E757431. She feels the kettle, puts it on again. I will not let this happen to me. That's what Canute said. I will not. The tide crept in, it washed his feet. Get back, he said, and it crept to his knee. She knows, and she will not let the blackness come. The water was cold, it washed round his waist. She can keep it out, if only she'll concentrate. His chest. It's a matter of willpower. His neck, lapping round his ears, retreat or drown. Robert, you will understand. I'll take him his tea and after, when he's come down, after breakfast maybe, we'll sit down, we'll have a talk. Except there's no retreat. You can only drown. Help me, Robert shall say, help your mother. And he won't. You were a painful birth, she'll say. 30 hours labour. She'll tell him all about it. She's never told him. He asked her once what time he was born because he wanted to have his astrological chart done. He was going mystical at the time. Well, they all were. And she almost told him. But she didn't. She just said half past three in the morning. I think it was. 
and she didn't tell the rest. I was 33. I was getting on, I'll say. I wanted you sooner, but Gerald wouldn't let me. First things first, get a home of our own. Wait till I'm promoted. He was a good husband at first, considerate in his lovemaking, but he never wanted a child. Buy a packet of three from the barbers, funny. These days they even have them on the telly. But then it was under the counter. I used to pray that one day they'd break, but they never did. I even put a pin through one, but he spotted it. Even took it back to complain. After that, he was always careful. Oh, it was aching for you. And then you came, I thought you'd tear me apart. They wanted a ser cesarean, but I said, no, I want to do this all by myself. But then the pain was too much and they gave me gas. So I don't remember some of it. And then there you were. I didn't see you till you were cleaned up. They scraped the bits off me, off you, and you were pink and purple in the face. So, so beautiful. Like something from another planet. You've been part of me and now you went. Like all the carrying and all the backache and the hope and pain all connected to this tiny, tiny creature in my arms. They'd happened to someone else. It was as if, as if there really was a stalk. And he'd flown over and he brought you in a bundle just like the picture in the children's books. Can you understand that, Robert? You've been brooding too much. You didn't ask to be born. It was me wanted you. Me brought you into the world. I'll always feel responsible. You're part of me, and yet I don't know who you are. Cuckoo. Cuckoo in the nest. I know I could have done more. I should have done more. I should have stood up for you against your father. Suck your blood and fly away. I tried, but he was stronger than me. You stay out of this, Eileen, or you'll regret it. And I was. I was frightened of him. When you live with someone who's stronger all that time, 45 years nearly, you get used to being weak. It becomes a habit. You give up. You let it happen. I thought about divorce. Who doesn't? But by then it was too late. I'd lost the will. I was too scared. I don't think I could manage. You couldn't. You can't. No, I can't manage. I need you, Robert. Help me. Help your mother. You owe me that much. He's staring at the kettle. It has boiled again. She reaches to it and touches it, wondering what it is. It scolds her. Ah! She comes out of her reverie. Not safe. Do herself a mischief. She takes the kettle determinedly, goes to tea tray. She hovers over it, uncertain where to pour it. What's it for? Tea. Tea? See. We had tea. In the cafe by the bus station. A pot of tea for two. But it was only one tea bag. Mean I call it the second cup was just a dribble too. And you told me. Gerald said not to tell me because it would kill me if you told me. But you told me. And it didn't, did it? She's a tough old bird, see? She's still here and she understands. And she wants you to be happy. Don't cry, Mama. She can't help it. Please, it's not your fault. It's his fault. It's not his fault. He can't help it. He's a sick man. I don't know how you stand it. Oh, 
It's not that bad. You get used to it. You shouldn't have to get used to it. Someone's got to look after him. He's wearing you down. He'll kill you. Don't be so daft. It's not that bad. You ought to be in a home. How can you say that? About your own father? He's not my father. Of course he's your father. You can't change that. You've always made excuses for him. He's getting worse. You wouldn't recognise him. Sometimes he... Uh... What? Oh, it's nothing. You look so worn out. I am worn out. That's a fact. He's very, um, demanding. Sometimes he, um, I know he doesn't mean it, but it's his stick. He waves it at me and he doesn't see straight. It doesn't hurt. It hasn't got the strength these days. But Leave him. He's my husband. You wouldn't understand your being that way. It wouldn't mean anything to you. But I promise, see, sickness and health, richer and poorer. It was real. I can't just, it tears me apart and it's not my fault and I don't know what to do. And if I thought I could make you love each other, I'd slit my throat on the spot and gladly. But it wouldn't because you can't and he can't. You never have. And all I know is there with him. You're siding with him. I'm not siding with anybody. I want to see you. I want to help you, Robert. But my place is with him. I hate him. Don't say that. True. I'll never forgive him. Neither will I. Then leave him. Come to Birmingham. We can get you flat. There's a women's refuge. They'll help you. How? How will they help me? What can they do? They can give you support. I don't need support. Mum, you're a victim of domestic violence. Don't use words like that to me. He beats you, doesn't he? And don't you talk about your father like that. He's not my father. Well, he's my husband. See, you are on his side. I'm not. Then leave him. Get a divorce. I just can't get a divorce like getting a new pair of slippers. You could. You could start a new life. I'm over 60. What kind of life would it be at my age? Your own life. I wouldn't know what to do with it. What am I meant to live on? Thin air? You've got your pension. And a long way that would go, on my own. I'd help out. I don't want your charity. It wouldn't be charity. I want to help. It wouldn't be right. Well, he'll have to support you anyway. It's called maintenance. You get half his property. I couldn't do that to him. He's an old man. He's worked hard all his life. Mum, it's eating you alive. Of course it is. I know that. I'm not daft. But what else is there? I can't start again. Not at my time of life. And I don't want to be, to be honest. For all his faults, I remember, see, when he wasn't like this. He was young, he was funny, and we went to Clacton. And he told me he loved me under the pier, in the blackout, and the waves whispered over the beach and the moon shone. All this was after. Mum, I can't live on your memories. And sometimes still, for no reason at all, he'll just look at me and smile. And he's in a good mood. I can see him on the beach, just in outline, and I can remember him so handsome in his uniform. I can still love him for what he was. I don't expect you to understand that. You're too young to understand. I don't. All I know is what I see, and I see you're on his side. And there's nothing more to say. Goodbye, Mum. Oh, no, again. He didn't even kiss her. Left the coach station. Like he'd left the house. Never looked back. He thought she was on Gerald's side, but she wasn't. She wasn't on anyone's side. 
She just wanted everyone to be happy and leave her alone. So what's wrong with that? Oh, you can't have it always. You've got to choose. Why? Only because you made it so. Him or me, you have to choose. Why should I? Why should I? You're my husband, he's my son. I have no son. My son. Where's the fairy liquid? You're his father. I have no father. You're tearing me in two! If you don't choose, you'll go mad. I will not go mad. Then choose. I'm your husband. I have the right. I have a son. Had. Had. He's dead. As much as Claude died, he died fast. He went away and that was an end of it. No, no. We've been happy, haven't we? After a fashion. What more can you expect? We did our best. Not good enough. Forget him. He can't save you. He's got a name. His name's Robert and he's back. That's what you think. He won't leave me. He won't let me down. No wise here? Curiosity and sizing you up, seeing how long you've got before he gets the house. He'll be looking at estate agents this afternoon, seeing what houses fetch around here, working it all out. He doesn't feel anything. How could he? You let him down like you let Claude down. You had the chance in the cafe by the bus station and you came back because you knew you had to. You can't escape, you can't win, and you don't want to. Shut up! You! You don't count. The diabetes poisoned you. And you poisoned everything else. Chemicals in the brain. That's all the brain is. Chemicals. Cells change. Sugars got to your brain. Temper tantrum. Days of silence. Days of shouting. You hit me. Yes, you did. Don't deny it. Right across the bridge table. Three tricks off with four hearts and you shout. You stupid bitch slap. And Mr. and Mrs. Walter, first time at the club. I don't know. That was the first. You were sick. And I knew you were sick, but I didn't know what it was. And I kept saying, see the doctor. But would you? No. And then when you had the stroke, they said it had been building up for a long time. That's when you get to a certain age. It was all the diabetes talking. And I tried to tell Robert it was just that. Nothing more than stupid, stupid diabetes. And you didn't mean it. Come back, Robert. It'll change. Everything will be all right, you'll see. But I couldn't. Because by then, I didn't even know where he was. And then you had another, and then the third. And then when I saw him in the bus station, it was too late. Until there he was at the funeral. And I knew it had to happen now. But you're still here, and you won't let go, but you will. You've got to, because he's the only hope, see? You took away 
everything else. You made me something else. Something I wasn't. Made me ashamed of what I was. Okay, we was poor. We was common. But we had heart. And we cared. And Claude danced so lovely. And I was right. He did look good in blue. But he went. And the others moved. People do. Things change. People die. Elsie. Bob. Both gone. Ted. I don't know where he's got to, even if he's still alive. Meg. In Canada. Claude's bones. Somewhere in the desert. You took me away. I couldn't go back, even if there was here, but they ain't. So what's the point in fretting over it? But Robert's here. He's here in our bed with Declan, his lover. And what's wrong with that? There's not so much more in this world we can pick and choose. And all I want is for him to know. And there are no words to make up. Just a pot of tea. He'll understand you don't need words sometimes. But you, you suck up git, won't even let me make up. But I can see. So don't you come the raw prawn with me. You don't know nothing. She's not so gone she can't make a pot of tea. Tea in the pot. Water on the tea. See? And stir. Right. And lid on and cozy over. It's only 14 minutes past seven. Because you're no use to me, Gerald, not now. Robert is. Robert loves his mum. He'll look after her like he promised. And there comes a time when you've just got to throw out the junk. And you're the junk now, Gerald. Good or bad, whatever. And there was both, I right? know. But you know, fucking you, you're dead. And that's all there is to it. So you've got to go out. Out! It's only 14 minutes past seven, and on this Christmas Eve we go to Bethlehem. And no doubt we'll be singing about the little town, how still we see thee lie. But alas, it's not all that still around the Church of the Holy Nativity, which stands on what is said to be the exact site of the Nativity. The rivalry between the various Christian factions who share the right to maintain it has developed into such an unholy row that Israel's border guards have been told to keep an eye on things this Christmas in case violence breaks out. Paul Reynolds is on the line from Jerusalem. Paul, what's, what's the row about that? Well, this goes back, John, many, many centuries and many, many generations, and it has to do with who controls the holy site. And uh, under the Ottoman Empire, the Jews were prevailed in this part of the world, uh, the, the rights uh, fluctuated. But then everything was frozen on the state of in the mid 19th century, and the Greeks. Baby's going to sleep. Hush now, baby, don't cry. Mummy's got her watch to keep. Lula, lullaby. 
Baby, close your eyes. Catch the boat to dreamland. Listen to your mum's lullabies. Lo, la, lo, la. Soon you'll fly away. Birdie's going to leave the nest come the break of day. Lula, lula, lullaby. Everything must grow. Never fear tomorrow. When the time is ready, you must go. Something for the scouts? She takes a last look at the tea tray. <coughs> checks that everything is in place. She realises that the milk jug is far too large. Finds another, pours half the milk into it, puts the rest in the fridge. One last check. Pats her hair, picks up the tray. Epilogue. One year later, a small pool of light Robert and his mother. She has her arms wrapped around him and is holding him very close. She stares at him in adoration, but does not take in what he says. Robert is wearing the same suit that Gerald wore. Oh, come on, Mum. Let me go. I can't stay forever. Declan's waiting. I've got to go. Got a lot of marking to do. I must get home. Don't do that, Claude. You'll make me fall in the copper. No, don't push me. I'll fall. Listen to me, Mum. Now, I think I've brought everything you need, but I'll check with the nurses, and if I think of anything else, I'll bring it next time. I've burnt the beans. What? I left the beans on. I burnt the beans. Don't be silly. There aren't any beans. I checked the gas and the electric. I'll be down to see you in a fortnight, okay? It's a lovely view you've got here. Look, you can see right over the lake. The rhododendrons are gorgeous, aren't they? And look, there's the ducks swimming. Can you see the little duckies? I can't see the bus. You don't need a bus. I'll be late for Robert if I miss the boss. This is Robert. I'm here, Mum. You get half price with your pension book. Listen, Mum. Are you listening? I want you to be happy here. The staff are very kind. They'll take good care of you. I know they will. You'll be able to go to the lovely long walks in the grounds when the weather's good. Where's the Kazi? I can't see the Kazi. You won't need to go out for the toilet. It's here, right in your room. Got to go to the Kazi for a big job. That too, right here. And there you see, you've got a television, all of your own, right here in the room. And guess what they've got for you this evening? A magic show, yes. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Hello, hello. I can't talk now. Your father's here. Mum, please, listen. That's not a phone. That's the tea bell. You've got to go down or you'll miss your tea. And we can't have that, can we? Where's my ticket? Your bus ticket. My pie ticket. You don't get pie without your pink ticket. You won't need a ticket. You'll get three meals a day here and tea and biscuits. It was in the brochure. I showed you. All right, we'll go down together. 
Come on then. And you can say hello to all the other residents too. Where's the fairy liquid? Chase them with the fairy liquid. You don't want fairy liquid with your tea. They'll be all over the roses. Come on, Mum. Just come and get your tea. When's Claude coming? When he can. No, please don't cry, Mum. Please don't cry. But this is for the best, honestly, it is. Honestly, look, I can't have you at home. Even if I did want to. I mean, I, I do want to, but who'd look after you? We can't afford a nurse. Declan's at work and I've got school all day. Oh, Pete wakes up, he stretches himself, he shakes himself. Gets out of the basket, he wags his tail. I remember, see? I've got no choice. It wouldn't be safe. It wouldn't be safe for you. I'll be down next weekend, I promise. I'll be down every weekend. And you'll be well looked after. You'll make lots of friends. It's for the best, Mum. Believe me. What else can I do? Puss. 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 E seven five seven four three one E seven five seven four three one